This is Gemma. She's got the most outrageous insurance story I've ever heard in my life. She passed her test, bought a polo, and now pays £6,000 a year to insure it, to be able to drive it. I'm getting loads of insurance stories from you guys. Prices have gone crazy for everybody, not just new drivers, but especially you guys. I'll be honest, there's no way to hack the system to get cheap insurance. It's still going to be expensive, but don't pay more than you need to. I asked all across social media for people's tips, tricks, and hacks, anything that's worked big or small to help you get cheaper insurance. And I'm gonna share all of those with you right now. Firstly, I've got three from Emma. She's speaking from experience. Number one, clear your search history or clear your cookies each time you search for insurance online and that's on price comparison websites and if you just search on an individual insurance company they'll be able to track the fact that you've previously searched for insurance and each time you search again you'll get more expensive quotes each time you put your details in. This one's number two, also from Emma. I'm gonna put my caveat at the end of this. Let me read it. Try having an experienced driver's name as the main driver and you as the added driver. That can certainly bring the price down. Okay, that will work. Having you as a second driver and an experienced driver as the main driver will massively reduce your insurance premium cost. But I'm gonna say, all the way through this video that you can't lie to your insurance company. If you are the main driver of the car, you need to put yourself down as the main driver. Number three from Emma, get a dash cam fitted and that should bring your price down. I would concur with that one, that works for me too. If you're speaking to an insurance broker over the phone or even insurance company over the phone, let them know that you've got a dash cam fitted and nine times out of 10, they'll give you a cheaper price for it. This one's from Stanley, it works, I know it does. Try it out for yourself. Different job roles have different insurance rates, it's true. One job, builders are quite high in insurance. Another job, priests, I made that up, have low insurance rates. I think they, they probably do. But try different job roles. Again, you can't lie to your insurance company. So let's say you work at Tesco, Sainsbury's, Asda, and you work on the fruit and veg aisle, and you help people find the right bananas. If you say that you're a greengrocer, that will have one insurance job rate, and if you say that you're a customer services advisor, that will have a completely different job rate. So try different things. Again, I'm gonna make it clear that you can't lie to your insurance company. So if it's not true that you do that thing, you can't say it. Stanley also agreed with Emma, add parents, grandparents, or other family members with good insurance and driving history to your policy. I agree, it doesn't even have to be family members. If your flatmate is gonna drive the car and they've got good insurance history, add them too. Stanley's coming through with the gold here. Use multiple comparison sites, it's true. Confused.com, Compare the Market, Money Supermarket, they all have different deals with different insurance companies. One might have a better deal with the company that's best suited to you than another. So shop around on the different sites and find the best quote for you. Even if it just saves you 20 pounds a year, it's better in your pocket than theirs. Okay, this one, actually people don't know, but it's a really good tip and if you start your insurance policy today or tomorrow, you're going to pay more than somebody who's starting it next week. I know you want to drive straight away. Yeah, for real. But you're going to pay loads more for it. So if you can, if you can, start your policy a month later. Obviously, you can't drive if your policy starts a month later. But find the car that you want, pay for it at the dealer, leave it at the dealership for a month, insure it now, to start a month later and you'll pay loads less for the whole year, promise, try it. For this tip, I'm gonna to have to get technical and tell you how insurance works. Here we go. When you buy an insurance policy, you will set an excess. It's gonna be 100, 200, could even be 500 pounds. That excess, if you have an accident or get into a crash, your insurance company will ask you for that excess first and then pay the rest of the price of repairs. So if your excess is 500 pounds and the total cost of repairs is 2,000 pounds, your insurance company will ask you for 500 pounds that you'll have to pay and then they'll pay 1,500 on top of it to the repair company. So here's the tip, increase the excess, as in increase the price that you're willing to pay before the insurance company starts chipping in for any accident, but offset it with excess protection. Typically, raising the excess will reduce your insurance more than excess protection will raise it. Excess protection means you do not need to pay out for the excess. I don't know if that works, but I'm adding it to my arsenal the next time 
I need to pay for insurance. If you try it, please put it in the comments. And if you try any of these tips, let us know which ones work in the comments. Let's build up the biggest bank of insurance hacks and tips ever. If you've got any more tips other than the ones that I'm saying now, put it in the comments. We can all learn from this and we can all pay less for our insurance. Also, I hope that I've earned a subscription from you for this gold dust information. Click the subscribe button. It helps me more than you know. Let's get on with the tips. Next, and remember, these are tips coming from you. I'm gonna give you the safety advice after. Try and get your mileage as low as possible, but be careful if you have a black box as they may end up charging you per mile. Stanley, yes, don't pay more for mileage than you need to, but again, be honest with your insurance company. If your daily commute is from London to Scotland every single day and you tell your insurance company that you're gonna drive about a thousand miles a year, you're gonna get your insurance canceled. So don't lie, but your annual insurance is an estimate. So if you're thinking I might drive 5,000 or 6,000 miles this year, say 5,000 because it will save you money. Paulie D says, Martin Lewis did a thing whereby you can see if alternative but similar job titles help bring your policy down. Thank you, we've had that tip, but there's an actual link. I've tried it, it works. I'm gonna put it in the description, click it and see if you can get a cheaper quote by saying that you do something slightly different, but still true. Thank you, Faye, for this one. This is actually something that lots of people don't consider. I've passed my test and I just buy a car. Actually, there's more options. Consider a lease, especially as a young driver. Most leasing companies will add insurance as part of the leasing deal. You'll pay one whole price for literally everything, including insurance and the car. You just add fuel. There was a thing called Peugeot, just add fuel for young drivers. I think you had to be at least 24 to access it though. So check out leasing as an option, as well as buying. For a year, for two years, it might just work out cheaper for you. Kazi says, create a new email address for your quote. Agreed. Even if you delete your search history and your cookies, when you actually go to buy the quote, they'll see because of your email address that you're logged in with that you've been searching before. So when you're actually ready to buy that insurance product first, create a new email address, log in with that brand new email address, put the exact same details in, she saved a hundred pounds. Worth it. This one's from Anita and it's the first one that I'm gonna honestly say doesn't work anymore. Pass Plus, the price that you pay for the Pass Plus course, let's say 500 pounds for the six hours to a driving instructor, and then you get the Pass Plus certificate, you're not gonna save 500 pounds off your insurance in the first or second year. So there's no point doing Pass Plus. If you save 20 quid off your insurance, but you've paid 400, 300, even 200 pounds for the Pass Plus course, then it wasn't really worth it. I tell you why it doesn't work anymore, because Pass Plus gets signed off by driving instructors. Driving instructors can just sign you off without doing the course. So insurance companies don't really trust it anymore. This one's come up a lot. Thanks Frankie for actually suggesting some. Look for cars in low insurance groups. If you haven't actually bought a car yet, think about the car that you're buying. Cars are ranked in insurance groups. One is the lowest, then it goes two, three, four, five, up until you get to Bugatti Veyrons. If you haven't bought your car yet and you are a young new driver, you might have to think about getting a car that's in a really low insurance group. I'm gonna give you the full list. Fiat Panda, Ford KA, Hyundai i10, Kia Picanto, Nissan Micra, Seat Me, Skoda Fabia, Smart 4, 4, VW Polo, VW Up, VW Fox, Citroen C1, C2. In fact, that's not the full list. We'd be here forever. But look for cars in insurance category one, not insurance category 50. Shall we have some fun? Do you wanna see what cars are in the most expensive insurance category? I do, let's do it. Audi A6, Bentley, Flying Spur, BMW i8, Corvette, Stingray, Jaguar XE, Lotus, Evora, Alfa Romeo, Stelvio, Audi e-tron. Were you thinking of getting a Ferrari F430? I thought not. Well, let's not worry about insurance category 50, but if you choose a car that's in insurance category one versus insurance category five, then you're gonna save some money. Here's one that people don't think about, but insurance providers love it. If you buy a car, install it with a safety device like an immobilizer or an alarm. If it doesn't come with one already, then definitely get one fitted. If not just for your insurance company, then for you and your peace of mind. Thatcham is the key word. Thatcham approved alarms and immobilizers. Tell your insurance company that you've got one fitted and you'll end up paying less. Lastly, I'm gonna give you two tips that worked for me when I last bought insurance. Ask about any discounts. This worked for me. Any discounts for young drivers, new drivers, armed forces, NHS, emergency services, 
actually they might not be offering it up front but there might be a button that they can click on their screen that gives you money off try it join a group or a professional association something to do with driving something to do with driving safely there's loads look them up online that you can join even for free that if you tell your insurance company you're a member of you can get discounts on your insurance premium by just being a member of a group that is dedicated to road safety driving awareness or anything similar and lastly this one's kind of obvious but i just want to make the point that paying annually over paying monthly will give you a cheaper price overall yes you'll pay less per month than you'll pay annually but overall over the whole year you'll probably save a few hundred pounds so it's worth paying annually over paying monthly we don't want to give these companies more money than they deserve so if you can pay annually then you will save overall thank you for watching and i hope you found these tips helpful this is insurance video part two to insurance video one that i did a few years ago check it out you will save money trying these tips you'll save even more money if you combine them all trust me thanks for watching peace bye